Hey guys, Poke here. I've been asked a lot during my streams on Twitch and on my YouTube channel what my display settings are set at. Uh, so here's a quick video of how to set up your graphics in DayZ to maximize performance versus quality. Keep in mind this is my settings. They might not work for you, but uh, I do hope to at least give you a little bit of input on what each setting in the config file means and how we can best make it work on your system. First of all, we want to go into my Daisy config settings to show you what I have everything set at. You'll also notice that I'm using the new UI. This gave me about a 10 to 15 FPS boost, so it's definitely recommended. So how do you get the new UI, you ask? Well, you open up your Steam, go to Library, sort through your games, find Daisy, right-click, hit Properties, and then go to Set Launch Options. In there, you just type in the dash, new UI, uh, just the one word, and uh, next time you launch Daisy, it will be in the new UI. Uh, like I said, this is going to give you some great frames. Like I said, probably about 10 to 15 is, is what it gave me. So let's take a look at my configuration here in game. You hit configure and we head over to video. Um, first of all, render resolution is going to have the largest impact out of everything in this entire menu uh, for your Daisy performance. Um, it goes all the way up to 200%. Um, I don't recommend going below 88%. The quality of the textures gets pretty uh, pretty bad uh, below 88. But uh, if you can't hit 100, you can't do 114, um, just don't go below 88. I like to hover at 100. Uh, I have Vsync disabled. Um, my objects uh, are low, terrain is high, clouds are disabled. The reason I have clouds disabled is because they actually have a pretty big impact on performance and they're just the clouds. Um, they are just floating up there and I really don't ever notice them anyway, so I just disabled them and I got a few frames out of that. Shadows I have on low um, and I obviously have my resolution set at my native resolution for my desktop. Um, texture detail is very high. It, it feeds off of the render resolution. So the higher your render resolution is, the higher uh, or the lower you're probably going to have your texture detail, unless you have a supercomputer, um, because it's, they feed off of each other. So I have this on very high because my render resolution is pretty low. Well, it's about halfway. Texture filtering is normal. Um, all this stuff down here, uh, HDR quality, I don't even think that they have HDR uh, currently enabled in here. If they do, it's, it's very minimal. Um, Post-processing is disabled. Ambient occlusion is disabled. Um, as we all know, there is no ambient lighting right now, so uh, I don't think I can even change that if I wanted to. Okay, so there are two files that we're going to be editing. Let's go into your documents. You're going to double-click on the DAISY folder in my documents. You're going to first of all go into daisy.cfg, just right click on it. Sometimes people will have an option to open with a different uh, uh, program, but just hit open. Uh, select a program from a, diff from a list of installed programs. Notepad, make sure you uncheck this. Notepad. And then you go in here and all you want to do is make sure the GPU max frames ahead is set to 1 and GPU detected frames ahead is set to 1 as well. It could already be like that. I'm not sure. I haven't reinstalled Daisy for quite some time. I'm not sure if the dev team has already adjusted that. Second, you're going to want to go into the .daisy profile, not the VARS one. So go into the whatever your name is, .daisy profile, open that up with Notepad, uh, same way as we did the last time. And then you're going to want to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And the biggest ones that we want to look at, first of all, is scene complex complexity. So scene complexity is um, it's, it's how far um, certain items are rendered. Um, so uh, you'll be in a field in, uh, in the north and someone's going to be 800 meters away, but you have a really low scene complexity down to 100 and you won't be able to see them other than their head. Uh, same with cars. You won't be able to see cars because they're uh, a complex object. Um, also, it also affects looking into windows. Um, like if you look in some buildings where you should be able to see through the window, but all of a sudden you can't, it just looks like a gray window without being able to see it in. That means that your scene complexity is not high enough, so you got to get closer. So you want to adjust that. They say 200,000 is uh, low or very low. Um, I find because I'm streaming, I have that extra load on my computer. If I hover around 300,000, maybe 400,000, um, that's what uh, that's what works for me. I have a 275 right now because I'm doing some testing, but um, but that I would suggest maybe hovering around 300,000 and then play with that. Don't go below, you know, don't go below 100,000 or 150,000. I would I would try and stay above that. 
Uh, next, we have the shadow Z di distance. Uh, 50 uh, is the, I don't know why I have mine at 50. Apparently, 100 is very low, um, but I have mine at 50 for some reason. It's the distance of shadows being drawn. There aren't much shadows in the game. There are shadows, but they're not all that great. Um, so I've got mine at 50. Preferred object view distance. This is the distance at which objects render into the engine. So um, you want your view distance, first of all, to match your preferred object view distance. Uh, preferred objects are like cars, people, um, uh, objects on the ground, uh, like uh, guns and, and whatever. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, like I said before, if you see somebody in a field and you are uh, too far away, you'll see just a head running around in a field. Uh, that means that your scene complexity isn't high enough. But if you have your preferred object view distance below 1,000, which is really one kilometer in the game, if you have that below 1,000, say you have it at 500 meters, and someone's 800 meters out there, you're not going to see them at all, so they can shoot you. So you should cap that out at 1,000. Finally, guys, I can't stress enough how important a solid state drive is for DayZ. The game is not optimized to use your CPU and GPU efficiently and draws heavily off of your storage device. Getting an SSD over an HD will improve your frames dramatically. Dean Hall, the creator of Arma and DayZ, uh, explicitly came out and said that SSDs are the best way to increase frame rate right now because we're just it's just not optimized. Um, so that is one of my biggest tips. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please come by and visit me on Twitch at PokeMeTV. I stream throughout the week. I would love to chat with you guys. Uh, and if you enjoyed the video, please do me a huge favor. It keeps my lights on and hit that subscribe button. Thanks, guys.